Welcome to the Hotel Julian here in Dubuque, Iowa. This is the oldest hotel in the great state of Iowa, the Hawkeye State. Loving the marquee here with the lights all lit up and they've got the sign here as well stating Hotel Julian on 200 Main Street. Now I am on a mission to stay at the oldest hotels in all 50 states of the United States. I'm off to a little bit of a slow start. Have only knocked out two so far, the states of Illinois and Ohio. But tonight I will be knocking out the great state of Iowa, staying here at the Julian Hotel in Dubuque. So follow me, this hotel has an enriching history dating back to 1839. This used to be known as the Waples House, right here on this block, a hotel back in 1839 and in 1854 that is where it became the hotel julian the julian namesake arrived at the hotel in 1854. now julian is named after the french canadian fur trader julian dubuque who discovered this town and that is the namesake of the city dubuque so julian dubuque is where the namesake of this hotel julian comes from the hotel also went through a number of renovations in 1913. It was devastated by a fire. Most of the original structure was burned to the ground, nothing but an empty shell left in some spots. And it was rebuilt and opened up again in 1915 as the hotel you see here today. So this hotel here in its current form dates back to 1915 and it has undergone a couple of other renovations, one in the 1960s and another very extensive multi-million dollar renovation just over 10 years ago in 2009 when this place reopened again. There's also mob connections with Al Capone. Al Capone used to come here to Dubuque and rent out the entire eighth floor of the Hotel Julian during his mob heydays in the Prohibition era in Chicago. He would come here to get away and to hide out on the eighth floor of the Hotel Julian. So a lot of interesting history here, potentially some ghost stories. Follow me, I'm excited to share with you what the oldest hotel in the state of Iowa looks like. We'll be exploring the halls, exploring the history, and who knows, maybe we'll have a few ghost stories to share with the world after the night is over. So follow me as I stay in the oldest hotel in the state of Iowa, the Hotel Julian. So just checked in and stepped off the elevator. I am on the third floor here at the Hotel Julian. And let's check out the room for the first time. Let's check in. Ooh, I got all my luggage on me. See if I can get some lights turned on. Oh. So first impressions, um, very clean, very elegant looking. Just beautiful, and I love the old artwork that they've got. I don't know if that's local art to Dubuque. Um, some close-ups of stone architecture, of nature. But yeah, I, I very. this is a standard room I paid. It's not cheap, it's expensive. I paid just under $200 for one night for a standard room here at the hotel. I did get a king bed that I'll be staying in. And I've got a beautiful window view of some of the downtown streets here in Dubuque. So paid a little bit more for the window view. Uh, but yeah, no, first impressions, a gorgeous room. Very nice, elegant hotel. And uh, yeah, let's, let's explore, look at this. So this must be the bathroom right here. Look at, the, look at the double doors on this thing. This is amazing. There's a light. Okay, so very dim lighting here in the bathroom. Okay, so you got kind of a mood, a bit of a mood lighting here in the shower, if you ask me. So if you want to come here with your lover, you got a little mood lighting to set the, set the tone here in the bathroom. Um, but yeah, so that, I guess one thing, yeah, it's, it's kind of dark here in the bathroom. Not necessarily a bad thing. I can cover up my pimples, don't have to look at them every morning. No bright lighting. Oh wait, here's another light switch. Ah, okay, I lied. See, all the zits are popping out now. A standard toilet, let's see, hopefully no. Nope, nothing, no dookies floating around in the toilet. That's good. So a very clean hotel so far. Loving the glass door for the shower. So yeah, very clean. I will say to the air smell, it's the air in the room smells very pure. There's a, a wonderful smell permeating throughout the hotel. I do love these 
French doors here for the bathroom. There we go. Look at that. Very cool. So yeah, if you have to go use the restroom, if you have to take a number two, you can do it in style. You get to really mean your business. Shut these two French doors and uh, have your privacy. But yeah, overall a standard room, but very elegant. This hotel was renovated, uh, completely gutted out and re-renovated back in 2008, 2009, um, just a little bit over 10 years ago. And you can tell it's a very clean, very nice, very enriching hotel so far. Very nice room. I'm happy with this room. Is it worth the $200? Uh, probably not overall, but I will say I am not disappointed at all for what I see here in the standard hotel room. And I've got, okay, a fridge here too as well. So yeah, flat screen TV and a little coffee nook as well. They get caffeinated in the morning. Oh, good, and they've got an ironing board and an iron, a nice looking iron, all set and ready to go in the room. And check this out too, ha <laughs> ha and a bathrobe. Even though I don't have a bathtub, I've got a bathrobe so I can sit around in style later, edit my vlogs. I can't smoke a cigar in this room because I don't want to get fined, but you know, it's tempting with the bathrobe, but that's okay. So this is what you can expect to see staying at the Hotel Julian, the oldest hotel in the state of Iowa. You can also spy on people walking out of the bars if you want to. Hopefully you have better things to do. Waiting for the elevators to take me down to the ground floor. I just had to point out I love this little seated area with this vintage picture of Dubuque. So if you're waiting for an elevator you can take a cozy seat. Well, I've checked into the hotel. I'm hungry, I haven't eaten anything since lunch, so I know a very unique bar and restaurant just a few blocks away from the Hotel Julian that I wanna take you to. So let's check this out, I'll get some food, and then we'll go back and explore this historic hotel. And no night would be more appropriate than one with a full moon as I stay in the oldest hotel in the state of Iowa. Resting on the western shores of the Mississippi River. The Mississippi River is literally two blocks straight ahead of me here. And there is a full moon in the night sky. Great way to kick this off. Loving that weird skeleton looking stick figure who's waving at me from atop that building across the street as well. Got some sirens going on over here too. So maybe an interesting night in Dubuque already kicking off. I gotta say, Dubuque may be the town with the greatest street art and murals that I have ever seen. There are just incredible murals and works of art on almost every street building here along the Mississippi River here in Dubuque. Just amazing. And here it is, the Hotel Julian from across the street, eight stories tall. Again, the original building dated back to 1839. There was a devastating fire in 1913. And this structure that you see here was the rebuild that opened up in 1915. So this actual structure has really been here only since 1915, even though there has been a hotel at this location for over 180 years. So what Paul's is known for is they have all of this exotic taxidermy that apparently the owner, whose name is Paul, makes sense, right? Paul's Tavern, Paul was the owner, hunted himself. And it's all over the bar, staring at me right now as I eat my hamburger. But just incredible. 
There's a lot of local animals and exotic animals. I mean, look at the size of that brown bear. But I think the real trophy, if I had to point one out, has got to be this giant polar bear that Paul claims to have hunted himself. It's just incredible. I feel like I'm in a museum, but I'm not. I'm at a bar enjoying a burger and a cold Potosi. So take a look at this. What they are known for at Paul's are their burgers. And I had to get a Potosi beer to drink with this. Potosi is a local brewery on the other side of the Mississippi River in Wisconsin. It's phenomenal beer. And I'm gonna try this burger that Paul's is known for. Looks like a basic cheeseburger, but I've heard that this is a local favorite here in Dubuque. They grill it right over there, the corner of the bar. Well, here we are at Paul's trying their amazing burgers here in Dubuque, Iowa. Mm. That's a nice, juicy burger. Good job. Delicious. I can definitely see why locals like to come here, have a few beers, and maybe sober up with a couple burgers grilled right there behind the bar. I will say I'm glad there's no cows taxidermied and hanging on the ceiling looking at me as I eat this burger. There, that's one thing I can say. There's no cows stuffed anywhere. Just, uh, just sheep, deer, and a lot of exotic animals and bears. So, makes me feel a little bit better eating with all these dead animals staring at me. By the way, Potosi is incredible. It's a local brewery, like I said earlier, in Wisconsin. And uh, you will find Potosi everywhere. Here in the Driftless Zone, in Northwest Illinois and Northeastern Iowa. Phenomenal. So take a look at this polar bear. This thing is massive. And apparently the owner, Paul, hunted it himself. Here is a shot of Paul with that polar bear on a matchbook. Man, you don't see that every day. Look at this. That's amazing. That is so cool. Yeah, that is advertising at its best right there. You hunt this massive beast, put it on a matchbook and sell it. Paul was definitely one of a kind. Check, just take a look at that bear. That thing is massive. If you were questioning me on whether this was a guaranteed genuine hamburger spot, there's an article right here naming the 150 great burger joints in America. And look, Paul's Tavern is one of them. Also some articles here on the taxidermy and tasty vittles. Dining with these animals, dead eyes, staring at me. <laughs> and then here's a really cool old picture of taverns and places in Dubuque throughout the years and centuries. Well, I should say decades, maybe not centuries. Years and decades. Yeah, really awesome bar. It's actually pretty dead tonight, which I'm happy about so I can film a little better. But here they've got these old wooden tabletops and booths, and then you've got the bar and all the taxidermy staring at you. Look at the squirrel, it's missing an eye. The squirrel is missing its eye. And then this bear here, the brown bear, is just vicious looking. They even have alligators heads on display here. And of course the bar is just a few blocks away from the Mississippi River, so they've got a small boat model as well. But yeah, a very unique bar. Highly recommend if you're in Iowa, stop by at Paul's Tavern for some great burgers and unique taxidermy. Loving these old school beer signs they have behind the bar. And I just learned that Star Beer was an old brewery here in Dubuque. It was a local beer in the Dubuque area. It's no longer being made, but they've got, they've, they're repping here at the bar. They're representing Star Beer here at Paul's Tavern. 
you know you're in a great burger spot when they've got their own neon light. Light beer, Miller Light, but they've got the burger in neon light form. I don't think I've ever seen a neon light, light burger, but now I have. All right, so I caved on a second burger. I had an early lunch today, haven't eaten since then, so don't judge me, but this awesome couple next to me recommended not to get a normal cheeseburger, but to get a cheeseburger with slices of ham on it. So this is the ultimate hamburger. I can't say I've ever had ham topped on top of an actual burger. So this is a first for me. You know what, this is, let's dig in. We're gonna do this. Only at Paul's Tavern can you get an actual genuine hamburger. All right, without further ado, this is the hamburger. Just so you know, I'm not making this up. This is a actual ham burger here at Paul's Tavern. Never had this before. This is really strange to me. They're watching me eat this because they recommend it. <laughs> this is phenomenal. This is really good. I told you. This, I think you just, you opened up a new world for me here. I know. McDonald's doesn't even do this. It's, it's a ham burger. A ham sandwich burger. This is really good. All right. Those watching at home, those of you watching, of course, Paul's Tavern here in Dubuque, Iowa, the only place that you can get an actual ham burger. With ham on it. With ham on it, exactly. <laughs> this is phenomenal. Oh, I swear that was a My mind is blown. You like it? Your son's a genius. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> yeah, I told you the guy come down here. Of course, fine dining. That's where I took her out for dinner. Uh -huh. yeah, that's why you, that's why you came right here. here. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Fine dining. Yeah, I'm learning something here. Debut burger. couples come yeah. here for fine dining because this is the only place you get ham on a burger. And free popcorn. <laughs> and free popcorn. Yeah, nothing cheap about us. All right. Well, that was Paul's Tavern here in Dubuque. What an incredible bar this is. So much history. I guess Paul started that bar back in the 1930s, so it's almost 100 years old. And just an amazing exotic taxidermy collection and amazing burgers. So, I'm gonna walk the block right there back to the Hotel Julian, and we are about to embark on an amazing exploration of the oldest hotel of the state of Iowa. So let's go back to the hotel and explore the halls and maybe we'll run into the ghost of Al Capone. If not, I got this awesome hat from Paul. So either way, it's a win-win. Just amazing. Look at the Hotel Julian at night, that electric sign. Looks like something straight out of the Twilight Zone. Oh, that's so cool. Looks like something out of the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror Hotel at Disney World. Just loving that neon sign at the top. Not only that, you've got the neon sign glimmering under the full moon there in the top left. Gosh, this is really picturesque. I'm loving this. No better night to stay at a potentially haunted old hotel than when there's a full moon in the sky. Oh, it's like straight out of a movie. I'm loving this, loving these vibes. Okay, well here we are walking the halls of the Hotel Julian. This is the third floor. I'm speaking a little quiet because it's late at night. I don't want to disturb people. But this is what the hallways look like here at the hotel. Very, very beautiful architecture. And actually this looks like this is just a dead end. Yes, it is. So that is a dead end. 
The hotel takes up about a city block here in downtown Dubuque. But yeah, very, very elegant looking. Again, this hotel here has, this structure has been standing since 1915. It's been renovated several times, so it really feels more modern. The renovation they did back in 2009, they put $33 million into that. They gutted out the entire interior and redid everything. So it really feels like a more modern day hotel. Look at, again, I love this little seated area here with the old picture of what I'm assuming is downtown Dubuque at the turn of the 20th century. This is right outside the elevator lobby. But yeah, just, again, a beautiful picture. Love the little seated bench that's inside the walls. I'm just gonna keep following the third floor. It looks like another dead end here, but who knows? So yeah, this looks to be a dead end and they have a housekeeping room with very, well, with double doors. I was gonna say grandiosa doors. They look a little rough, but double doors. And yeah, that is the third floor. So that is the hotel layout here at the Hotel Dubuque. The Hotel Julian, I should say. So yeah, just walking the hallways, getting a feel for what the hotel is like. Again, I don't have any weird, creepy vibes at this hotel. Uh, of the other oldest hotels I've stayed at in Ohio and Illinois, this one is definitely the most modern feeling because of the refurbishment that they had a little over 10 years ago. So let's take the elevator down to the grand lobby, the main lobby, and I'll film a little bit around there because it's absolutely gorgeous. It's very beautiful. And again, most of this uh, renovation that you see here really gives you the feel of that era when the hotel rebuilt itself in 1915. It's got a kind of a early 20th century feel to it. All right, let's go in the elevator. If I can turn this around. So, yeah. Just got shut on. So here's the elevator. Pretty basic. Let's go down to the lobby. And look around down here. Yeah, you can see um, there's two main elevators. They both have some pretty old paintings. And here we are. This is the main lobby. And this is the main lobby here in the hotel, and it's absolutely gorgeous. It's got kind of a modern feel to it, but it's very circa 1915 when the, not the original hotel, but when the hotel burned down in 1913, they rebuilt this structure in 1915. It is gorgeous. I mean, look at this grand stairwell with the wood trim. It's almost reminiscent of the Titanic, if you kind of think about it. And uh, loving the palms. But yeah, just a absolutely gorgeous hotel. And I really love this, this sofa looking thing here. I've stayed in a number of hotels that are kind of early 20th century based, and I don't know what this thing is called. Um, it's kind of a, but I've, it's, it's almost like, it's like a round sofa, I guess, for lack of better terms. But that's something I see in a lot of elegant hotels from the turn of the 20th century in the lobbies. You can sit down and get your luggage, wait to get checked in, wait for your parties to come meet you the next morning. Uh, but yeah, just an absolutely stunning hotel here in Dubuque. Nothing but good things to say about it. Talking to some of the employees here, they, they said that there's a lot of history. The Al Capone history is apparently, there's truth to that. Al Capone did stay here at this hotel primarily on the eighth floor. That's where he liked to stay. Um, and there may be some paranormal things to this hotel as well, which is what I expected. A lot of the oldest hotels in states have ghost stories and paranormal experiences, and I'm all into that. that that's why I love staying at these places. But apparently the hot spots at this hotel are the eighth floor, where Al Capone and his gangs used to stay, and also the basement. So without further ado, before they put the rope up, I'm going to try to get down to the basement. We can look around a little bit, and then we'll come back up to the main lobby. So let's check this out.
freak me out. The front doors have a sensor on them. But anyway, let's head down to the basement. Without further ado, let's check out the basement of the Hotel Julian, the oldest hotel in Iowa. I feel like I've been saying that a lot, just in case you forgot. There's a painting here, Dubuque Boat and Boiler Works. And here we are, entering the basement of the hotel. Julian, the lights turned on. Oh, this is cool here. I had to point this out. St. Louis and St. Paul, the oldest organized, only reliable line. And that is passenger steamers. It's an old advertisement. I do want to share that there is a highway called the Highway of the Saints. I want to do a road trip on that someday that connects St. Paul, Minnesota with St. Louis, Missouri. And it runs much of the Mississippi River here in the Midwest United States. Now, Caroline's, this is a fancy restaurant that they have here in the hotel. Um, obviously, I didn't check that out tonight. Maybe I'll stop by there tomorrow, but it has very good reviews. Some fancy pottery. And I can hear some classic music from like the 20th century, early 20th century. But uh, anyway, this is the basement of the Hotel Julian. From what I've heard, from, well, from what employees have told me, this is one of the more active spots when it comes to paranormal activity here. Some more cool paintings about Dubuque. Malting beer. Yeah, I guess Dubuque and this whole region has a, a pretty rich history with breweries because of caves along the Mississippi River. But uh, yeah, so far, Pretty basic down here, nothing too crazy, just a long hallway. And I guess this is the pool. So they have an exercise room and a pool. Let's see if I can get in. I've got my key. They do have a pool here. It's obviously closed, it's after 10 p.m. But yeah, kind of a nice typical quaint pool with a whirlpool in the corner. Nothing too crazy. And here's the exercise room. They do have a pretty nice looking gym. They've got treadmills. They've got, I, I'm sorry, I'm getting a lot of reflection here, guys. I apologize. Um, but you can kind of see there's some treadmills. There's a small weightlifting station. You know, enough to do on the road. If that's not enough for you, just join in Anytime Fitness. Quit complaining. But uh, yeah, pretty basic down here. Not, not a whole lot to it. So I just talked to a gentleman named Sean who's worked here for over 20 years at the hotel. And he told me he had one experience here in the basement level. And I'll tell you in a second. First of all, I'm passing this Potosa Spa. It's closed right now. But he was telling me that most of the stories, the paranormal stories that people have down here are inside this spa. And the spa, I guess, takes up the entire length of this hallway. So it's a pretty big spa, just on the other side of this door. But it, it is unfortunately closed right now, and I can't get back there to explore. But anyway, that is one of the hot spots, apparently, according to him, who's worked at this hotel for over 20 years. He also told me that the other incidences usually happen here in Carolyn's. The restaurant, which is also unfortunately closed right now, so I can't get in there tonight. But apparently he told me that he smelled cigar smoke while working late one night here in Carolyn's, and he could not figure out where it came from. There was nobody else here in the hotel. He went outside, he walked around, there was nobody outside. And he used to be a cigar smoker. He knows the smell, he swears to it, and he cannot explain it. So he said his only paranormal experience here at the hotel was here in this restaurant and he said that it is kind of creepy back there near the boiler room but again unfortunately it is closed it's after hours for the restaurant i can't get back tonight so those are the two stories that i've heard here in the basement in regards to paranormal activity it seems pretty quiet i'm gonna head back upstairs into the main lobby and let's go to the eighth floor where al capone used to stay I gotta say, I love this mirror. 
just look at this old mirror here in the lobby. Just absolutely gorgeous. And I, it's got to be over 100 years old. So standing here outside the elevator lobby on the main floor, I had to point this out. I love, look at this. It's an old letterbox from the turn of the 20th century. And people would drop envelopes and letters down from their floors. And they would go down these chutes and collect here in this letterbox. So I am up on the eighth floor and look at that. There's the top of that letter chute, the mail chute. That thing is so cool looking. And I read in one of their brochures that they still use these here at the hotel. It's very cool. And that is the top one here. You just see the slot, you drop your letters down and the mailman will collect them in the lobby on the box at the bottom downstairs. So here we are on the eighth floor and this ice machine is super loud. But this is the floor that Al Capone supposedly stayed on 100 years ago. Just a quiet night. No crazy vibes on my end. Just a beautifully renovated hotel, but it is pretty wild to think that Al Capone supposedly stayed on this very floor here at the Hotel Julian back in the 1920s, roughly a hundred years ago. And there you have it, the end of the hallway here on the eighth floor. Well, Al Capone, if your ghost is still around, show yourself. You were the kingpin in the heyday in Chicago in the 1920s. Well, here I am in the 2020s. Where are you at? I'm calling you out, Capone. Probably happened after I turned the camera off. Now, it's interesting. The gentleman I talked to earlier that worked here for 20 years, Sean, he couldn't tell me exactly what floor Al Capone stayed at. He didn't know if it was necessarily the eighth floor, even though the website for the hotel states the eighth floor. A lot of historic articles I could find mentioned the eighth floor. I'm assuming that's the most likely story. But what the gentleman, Sean, that works here did tell me is he did say that Al Capone did stay at this hotel and Whatever floor that Al Capone stayed on, he rented out the floor below him for all of his security. So all of his security personnel, his henchmen, would stay on the floor below the floor that he stayed on while he was here at the Hotel Julian. All right, well, not a lot happening here on the eighth floor. What I'm gonna do is take a stairwell now down to a few more floors in the hotel. And then, uh, yeah, let's see what we can find. Let's see if there's any other secret areas, places I haven't seen. I'm assuming that, oh, this is creepy. Oh, the lights are on the stairs. What the heck? Oh, there they go. Now they turned on. Weird. Okay, well, that was a little, a little weird. What is it with old hotels and stairwells being creepy? There was a hotel I stayed at in Marquette, Michigan last year that had flashing lights in the stairwell and it was crazy. I had a, that on a video. Check it out. But uh, yeah, here's a, another elevator. They have a service elevator here in the stairwell. And check this out. There's, what is this? Is there more to this place than the eighth floor? Oh, this must go to the rooftop. Okay, yeah, maintenance. This door.
door must remain shut, so obviously not going to go up there. But, uh, okay. So that must go to the rooftop, just some more maintenance stairs. So with that being said, let's continue downstairs. Let's see if there's anything different on the seventh floor. Here's that mail chute again. Again, that sofa alcove. Another beautiful old photo of Dubuque, 1910. Loving that optical sign there from 1910. That is so cool. Bunch of gentlemen standing on a trolley car in downtown Dubuque. Now it feels a little bit darker actually on this floor. Okay, maybe that's why the lights must be on sensors. But yeah, pretty much looks like the same situation. Here's another stairwell. Let's, let's try this. And the lights are out. Oh, there we go. And they pop back on. So let's keep heading downstairs. So I'm assuming that all of the floors are identical to each other, third through eighth. Nothing too crazy to see. So yeah, beautiful hotel. Supposedly there's a history and a connection with Al Capone and his gangs in Chicago that used to stay here when things got hot in Chicagoland. But uh, not feeling anything too creepy. Oh, this is different. Okay, the layout changed a bit here, third floor. Interesting. Hmm. So it's a little bit different layout here. On the third floor stairwell, probably just because that's where it meets the second floor, and second floor is more of the general public area. But here's third floor, that's the floor that I'm staying on. Um, one thing that I did want to say, uh, and mention that Sean had said, and the guy that has been working here for over 20 years, he did say before they renovated the place in 2007 through 2009 that the original fitness room was actually like right over here in this space. So, I mean, the walls weren't here, but it was this whole open area here. And I actually probably went into that back stairwell area that I was just walking through moments ago. But this was the original fitness area here on the third floor, right outside the elevator lobby. And he said that they would always get a phantom phone, a telephone that would ring. And he would always get calls to come up and check on it. But when he came up here, there was nothing ringing. So apparently, back before 2007, 2008-ish, there was a phantom phone that would ring here in the old fitness center. And it just so happens that I'm staying right here in room 316 tonight. So I'm staying right across from where the old phantom phone would ring in the fitness center here next to the third floor elevator lobbies. So who knows, maybe I will have a phantom phone ring tonight in room 316. Or it might just be the front desk calling me tomorrow morning because I slept through my alarm and they're trying to get me out of the room and kick me out of the hotel. It's probably more likely, but who knows? We'll find out. So back in the main lobby, I wanted to point out, not only is this the original tile from the 1915 hotel, but you can see that all of these pillars are encased in wood paneling, except for one. This one is not. This is exposed marble, and this is original to the 1915 hotel. This marble column is what they looked like back in the day. And I love that even though they encased 
all the other ones, they purpose, purposefully, purposefully, if I can speak, kept this one exposed so you can see what they originally looked like in the hotel. I think that is so cool that they did that. And I also wanted to make a comment on that mirror that I was bedazzled with earlier. And these doors, they're the motion sensor, they keep opening up, but this mirror is from the Zeke Field Theater in New York City. Original to that. And it is now here at the front entryway of the hotel. Just incredible. I love these old vintage mirrors. Look at this. Again, these entry doors are motion sensors, so they're kind of annoying, but right here, look at this. This is an early rendition of the Julian House back in the 1800s before the fire of 1913. Originally, this hotel was a four-story building. Now it's an eight-story building that happened after the fire of 1913 destroyed the original structure, and it was rebuilt and opened in 1915 as an eight-story hotel. And look, early settlers of Dubuque, Iowa. There's a picture of Julian Dubuque and his fox Indian bride named Potosa. And they are both buried in a tomb that I'm planning to visit tomorrow and show you that's atop a bluff that overlooks the Mississippi River. It's really, really cool. But that is what you see when you first walk into the main lobby of the Hotel Julia. I was talking to the front desk lady and she said that here on the second floor she has heard things rattling around at night right in this area such as glassware silverware things rattling around it often happens around 2 30 late at night graveyard shift and whenever she comes up here there's nobody here now there is a bar here that I showed earlier outside the banquet rooms. So perhaps it's the glassware here at the bar. But she said that was one of the strange things that tends to happen here when she's working late at night is she will sometimes hear what sounds like glassware clinking about like somebody's up here messing around with it. But then she'll come up here and it stops and nobody's here. Just a, right up here on the second floor. There's the front desk there. Just right here. So who knows? And take a look at this. This is the famous Al Capone suite here at the hotel. Just look at this door frame. It's here on the second floor. And look at that doorknob as well. Very fancy, all the wood carvings engraved in the door and the door frame. Now Al Capone supposedly stayed on the eighth floor when he lived here a mm -hmm. hundred years ago. Well, not lived here, but when he stayed here a hundred years ago. This is room 201. This is currently a massive suite that they've named the Capone Suite. It's the most expensive suite here at the hotel. It's very elegant inside. But look at that door frame. There it is here on the second floor of the Hotel Julian. Right across from the elevator lobby. They do have an amazing bar called the Riverboat here connected to the main lobby. It's a really beautiful, elegant cocktail bar. Actually, I think they're still open. Maybe I'll grab a drink there to call the night to an end. If we don't find any spirits in here in the hotel, might grab a nightcap and call it. But anyway, it's a beautiful cocktail bar here connected to the hotel called the Riverboat. A bit of a Mississippi River theme because the Mississippi River is only two blocks away 
from this very hotel. There's freight trains running literally right there across the street from the hotel, so it's very loud. But I wanted to point out at the back door here, they have a statue of Julian Dubuque. He lived from 1762 to 1810. He was a Canadian French fur trader, adventurer and founder of our city, Dubuque. So this is the man that the city Dubuque is named after and the Hotel Julian is named after as well. A French Canadian fur trader. And man, that is a loud train. But yeah, a lot of commerce going through here. You've got the Mississippi River, the train, the train tracks rolling through. A lot going on here in Dubuque tonight. Here's the entryway to Caroline's. I think that's how you pronounce it, Caroline's. Caroline. We've got Poltergeist 3 vibes here. Caroline. But this is the restaurant. Um, they're closed right now. I, I might check that out tomorrow before I leave Dubuque. But this is where Sean said that a lot of the paranormal activity on the basement level tends to happen is in the back of this restaurant near the kitchen and the boiler room areas. Well, I think that concludes our nighttime adventures here at the Hotel Julian, the oldest hotel in the state of Iowa. My phone is going off. I totally butt dialed that, so yeah, that wasn't like a ghost calling my phone like I said earlier, but yeah, that was weird, that kind of went off. Anyway, my battery's gonna die. Well, I was saying before my phone mysteriously went off and my camera battery died, I just put a new battery in, um, I think that's gonna do it for tonight. It's, it's been a very quiet night, but a very beautiful hotel, an amazing layout in a, a gorgeous city here in downtown Dubuque. I'm gonna head back up to my room and we'll close this out. All right, getting the other elevator. It's kind of confusing because the elevator on the, on the right side has the buttons on the left. But the elevator on the left side has the buttons on the right. Yeah, another beautiful painting here. Dubuque, Wisconsin to Minnesota. An old steamship on the Mississippi River. And here we are, back on the third floor. Home sweet home. Al Capone, are you here? Anybody mess with my stuff while I was away? Well, here I am, checked back into my hotel room. Let me take a seat and we'll wrap this up, I think, for the night. Just a peaceful night here at the Hotel Julian. Um, yeah, you never know what you're gonna find with these oldest hotels. I'm just getting started. Again, I've got 46 more states to do after this one, and I'm not done with everything yet. I'm gonna get some shut eye, but I will be filming more of the hotel when I wake up tomorrow morning, when the sun rises over Dubuque, and we will explore some more of the downtown region of Dubuque as well. So it's still a lot on the way with this video. Um, but yeah, overall, a just a gorgeous hotel. Very elegant, very peaceful, a rich history. And I was able to confirm to the best of my ability with the, with the employees that work here that there is, in fact, an Al Capone connection with this hotel. He did stay here. Um, that was verified by multiple people. Uh, so there definitely is an Al Capone uh, connection with this hotel here in Dubuque, which was really cool to, to kind of dig further into because a person like Al Capone is larger than life. There's all these urban legends, tall tales about him. Uh, most small towns across the United States, I swear, have um, some kind of connection they claim with Al Capone. So usually I kind of shrug that off, but to be honest, talking to people that work here today, a lot of them did claim that yes, in fact, Al Capone stayed at this hotel on multiple occasions and may in fact have been a shareholder, a part owner of this hotel also in the 20s. So very cool to verify that today. And just again, a, a gorgeous hotel. I can't recommend it enough. Uh, it is a little on the pricey end, but well worth it. And Dubuque is such a beautiful town, a lot going on downtown here tonight as well. Um, but with that being said, good night, everyone. I'm going to 
see if anything happens. If I go to bed and hear a bump in the night, uh, I will do the best I can to record and capture that. But if not, I will see you in the morning. So good night, everyone, and we'll check in with you tomorrow. Gotta say, I've got a great view of the American flag waving in the wind outside my third floor window here in my hotel room. Yeah, the street view is totally worth it. Good night, everyone.